what I'd like to do is kind of outline really an idea of what does customer engagement really mean? And as you're out there in the market, we previously heard about uh, price, we've heard about the technology. There's a lot of information in the platform itself. There's a lot of information in your salesforce.com or your CRM in general. But let's really think about what's happening there. And the reference to the IDC with big data in general is there's a lot of platforms in the space that ultimately will help you succeed. And I just want to let you know that this isn't going away. This is really what we got to start to focus on as providers to our customers. And ultimately, like how does that affect customer engagement is what we'll go through in that scenario. And churn happens for two reasons, right? Your customer goes away, they die, they go out of business. Or you haven't solved the ultimate problem that they're going after. And Honestly, this is what I see most often in the market is we sell them internet, we sell them UCAS, um, we sell them SD-WAN, and then we move on. And we never do a good job or we rarely do a good job of going back into that customer and ultimately making sure that they're okay, they, that their outcome that they actually focused on, that we promised them is actually being delivered. And so what happens is we lose the customer. The reality is we can actually be smarter about how we talk and communicate to our customers, how we ultimately educate and train, and how we ultimately upsell, cross-sell at the end of the day. And I highlighted the two here where customer lifetime value is one of the drivers, but then how do we acquire customers going forward, and how do we acquire customers without a fire aim approach, without being blind in the market? And that ultimately is what we have to start to think about. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, Chris Sanos, who will be here today, um, his big um, push to the market is the riches are in the niches. And what that really tells us is we have to be really, really good. We have to be specialist in what we're selling. And not selling based on the technology, but my push to you would be focus on a vertical, focus on a, um, an industry vertical or maybe a technology vertical. And we want to think about this because truthfully, it's a race to zero on voice. It's a race to zero on internet or, or connectivity. And we have to start to understand how do we keep that average revenue per user up, knowing that those two commodities are quickly going to zero dollars. We want deeper relationships. You've already worked with the person that's making the decision. Why are we not going back into that person and going to sell them more? That's a true trusted advisor. You're going back to them with business outcome focus, trying to enhance productivity, as uh, they mentioned yesterday in one of the panels, and effi increase efficiency. So why are we not looking at that? And what does that look like? Well, if you get really good at a specific vertical or technology, now you truly are the industry expert. Salesforce.com has done a phenomenal job on this where you have Salesforce implementers. All they do is Salesforce implementation. Why? because they're really, really good at it. Their sales cycles are much faster. Their operational uh, efficiencies are much better because now they're really, really good and they understand the platforms that they're working within. And so when we start to think about this overall design of customer engagement, the idea is let's understand who we're working with so we can have a better conversation with them. You don't go to the doctor you go to a general, generalist doctor to kind of get an idea of what's going on, but when you have to have surgery, you go to a specialist. Why can't you all be specialists? Stop being generalist. There's enough generalists in the market that we don't need more generalists. We need more specialists in the telco, in the technology side to help us get better. And so what this ultimately tells me is, wow, you have 24% of your, your customer base in these two industries. Where's the marketing collateral for that? And so then I went another layer deeper and I said, you know what, let's dip this into um, our database. So we have a um, customer intelligence database that we built from different wholesale um, aggregators. Think of like Discover Org in this example. And I said, let's go find out what CRM those customers have. Why is that important? It's important because we're not talking about voice. We're not talking about data. We're talking about integration. We're talking about business efficiencies and we're talking about how do we change the discussion from price to value. And value to them is how do you integrate that voice into my CRM? But then the next conversation is you have G Suite or you have Microsoft 365, how are we gonna integrate into it? 
Are you doing Microsoft Teams? Are you using Google and Google Hangouts? Are you using um, uh, Google with Zoho or Google with Salesforce.com? Do you start to understand like the whole idea of we're never talking about voice, we're talking about workflows within the business? And I'm going to leave you with a process that I use um, with many of my clients. And this process is pretty straightforward. Now, some of it manual. Um, it, it can be automated over time. But the idea is we have to figure out what we're connecting to. And so your takeaway on that is what systems do you have in place? What systems do you have in place that are storing information about either prospects or customers? Once you've identified that, now look at it and say, okay, what's the assessment and planning? So what are we ultimately trying to do? What are we trying to get out of these, out of these databases? And once we've been able to do that, then we can start to do data collection. Do we need all objects from every system? The answer is no. So what's stage or step one in this crawl, walk, run approach in order to get smarter? The data modeling piece can come as you're, you're developing it. Um, you can outsource, you can, you may have someone in house that's you know, good with Excel, can manipulate information. The whole idea there is we start to correlate different systems so we have to have unique identifiers we have to be able to bring the data together ultimately know what's going on we've identified the issues what information is missing what do we do how do we backfill it what's going on there and then ultimately what we're hopefully getting out of this is we're gonna find opportunities to go sell something it's easy the data is right there in front of you it tells you what to do next so let's use that and then the obviously is the recommendation which none of you are even close to that yet Ultimately, you have uh, Google, you have um, IBM Watson. We're going to get to the idea of feeding these machines and machine learning, and we're going to start looking at it and let them recommend what we do next. And when you do that, ultimate goal is to take action. Take action on your business. Take action on your customers. And truly, this process works when you start looking at customer engagement at the end of the day. It doesn't matter if you're selling UCAS. It doesn't matter if you're Spotify. It doesn't matter if you're Apple. This process applies to all of you. And that's what I want you to take away from this conversation. And think about it. And if you have questions and you want to chat more about it, I'm around. And we're happy to have discussions with you and give you a thought process and some steps in order to move that forward. But don't be afraid of data because it's going to be your best friend, and if you don't do it, your competition will. Thank you.